Welcome everyone to the 2020 Virtual Hurricane Seminar. I'm Steve Weagle, the Chief Meteorologist at WPTV News Channel 5 and WFLX Fox 29. We want to get you ready for hurricane season. Of course, uh, season runs June 1st through November 30th. Uh, we're hoping for a slow year. Last year, of course, Dorian was the big storm that everyone was watching. I always say to people, we're all kind of hurricane experts at this point, especially if you've been here for a few years because you've likely gone through Francis and Jean and Wilma and Irma and Matthew and uh, Michael and of course Dorian last year which came right up to our doorstep on Labor Day weekend hit the Bahamas sat over the Bahamas for about 34 hours and then turned at the last second at one point the winds were 185 miles an hour that is an incredible category 5 hurricane uh, very few hurricanes get up to 180 185 miles an hour those are the sustained winds in Hurricane Dorian as it moved through the Abacos. So yeah, but some of you may have visited uh, the Abacos in the past, uh, Green Turtle and Hope Town and Marsh Harbor and uh, Man of War, all those beautiful islands that are in the uh, Northern Bahamas that I know a lot of people here, <coughs> actually boaters, will uh, go and visit, myself included. So it's uh, of course uh, uh, the, a hurricane that I don't think any of us will ever forget. So then it becomes an issue of not only the wind damage, but also the damage from flooding and really kind of two types of flooding. There's fresh water flooding from the rainfall. You have a hurricane that stalled over Grand Bahama for almost two days, just dumping inches and inches of rain an hour. And you also have the, the effect of the storm surge with that persistent wind. I'm going to talk more about storm surge in just a minute. So Dorian, of course, the storm to remember last year. And if you want more information, you can always go to the Hurricane Center website. They will give you a complete uh, breakdown on Dorian and the uh, track and the intensity and exactly where it moved. But it came obviously right up to our doorstep, about 100 miles off the coast. That is the center of the storm over around Freeport and Port like Lakaya. And then it turned pretty much did a, the right turn, a 90 degree turn and moved north after that. All right, here are the hurricane names for this year. And we've already picked up several. Uh, it really depends on when you're watching this hurricane seminar, but uh, as we do this at the beginning of the season, and they go in alphabetical order, male, female, and the list is recycled every six years. So you may recognize some of these names from six years ago. If they don't do a lot of damage, there's not a lot of death and destruction from them, they, uh, they, they won't be retired, and you'll see them again six years uh, from now. Okay, as far as the season, as I mentioned earlier, it goes from June 1st through November 30th. But usually we don't have to deal with anything in June or even through mid-July. The real heart of the season starts in mid-August and goes through mid-October, especially for Florida. So we'll start off with a possible storm every couple of years in the Gulf or the Caribbean in the month of June, maybe even before June. We had two named storms this year uh, before June 1st. Uh, they usually don't last very long and they usually don't get very strong, but it is possible. And then really from mid-August, August 15th through October 15th is when we really start to see the season heat up. We, that's when we see 70 to 80 percent of our named storms and hurricanes between mid-August and mid-October. And I always judge my when I stop taking vacation around August 15th. So I like to uh, get back here by mid-August and then I'm safe that way. Because even if we don't get a direct hit from a hurricane, it's very likely we're going to get in a hurricane cone. Now the cones go out five days. I'll show you those in a second. So it, even, even though it may not come real close to us, we still, you know, once, once Florida, once South Florida gets in a cone, you know everything gets ramped up pretty quickly with people heading out to home improvement stores and, uh, and that. Now there's also a second little bump between mid-October and late October, and you may remember Hurricane Wilma back in 2005. That was a late October hurricane. So there's a, a second little um, uh, bump in the frequency of storms, and those are storms that typically form in the Gulf of the Caribbean, and then they kind of come in the back door and become a threat to Florida. So those are the ones that we have to watch. And usually we don't have a lot of time to watch them. You know, the, 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 the storms that form in the Atlantic in August and September, they have thousands of miles to gain strength and uh, we can watch them before they be, become any kind of threat here. But those late October storms, they can be an issue sometimes getting people ready. And by that time in the season, we're all kind of hurricaned out and we don't want to deal with it anymore anyway. So hurricanes are rated on a scale from category one to category five. Category one's the weakest. 
um, as um, kind of a comparison. Well, Dorian, obviously a, a Category 5 hurricane as it went through the Bahamas. Uh, Francis, if you were back here in 04, was a Category 2. Uh, Jean, which was three weeks later, it made landfall here in uh, September 2004. That was a Category 3 hurricane. And a Michael, when it made landfall in the Panhandle two or three years ago, that was a Category 5 at landfall that rapidly intensified in the Gulf. And, you know, usually not only do we see more wind damage the higher the category, but we'll also get a higher storm surge. Um, we can get heavier rains, more flooding uh, from uh, storms, and typically all hurricanes and, you know, the tropical storms are trying to develop will have a tornado threat with them too, especially on the outer edges of the, uh, the, uh, the outer feeder bands, if you will. There's a term that we don't want to hear either as we go through hurricanes. When hurricanes threaten uh, this area, all the meteorologists locally, we all go to the hurricane center because we don't want information on one station being different from another station. We want everything to be consistent. We, we, don't, we don't want one station going, you know what, don't worry about this one, it's gonna be fine, and then have us going, you know what, you better evacuate now. Everything has to be consistent. So we follow the lead of the Hurricane Center and we also follow the lead of emergency management. They determine when evacuation zones get kicked in. And uh, that's so everything's consistent. Now there are TV markets out there where some people have felt like they can do a better job than the Hurricane Center. It doesn't work that way, and they usually fail, and there are usually big problems that uh, arise from that. So we like everything consistent. Now as far as the, the, so they give you two pieces of information that are invaluable. They, in that cone, they tell you where the storm's going to be from uh, 12 hours out to 120 hours, so five days out. And they also tell you what the intensity forecast is going to be too. They do a fantastic job with the track forecast. In fact, the tracks have been shrinking, that cone has been shrinking for the last 15 to 20 years each year. It didn't this past year, more so because of Dorian and trouble or the, the challenges forecast in Dorian. Uh, and the intensity forecasts are still very problematic. So I always tell people, let me run a scenario through you. Let's say a hurricane uh, is forecast to make landfall here as a category three, three or four days from now. I would be thinking to myself, the most likely scenario is a category three making landfall, but it could be a category two or it could be a category four. Always give some leeway. And it can make a big difference, especially if you're talking the jump between a three and a four. So you wanna, I always talk worst case scenarios because if you deal with the worst case scenario, if you prepare for the worst case scenario, you're gonna be fine. If you don't and you let it go and you think it's nothing, and a lot of people unfortunately still do, that's when you get in trouble. So prepare for a worst case scenario and you will be fine. You know, if you look back at hurricane deaths and injuries um, after the fact, you'll find that very few people who have prepared and are smart die or get in trouble, even in very strong hurricanes. It's the people who make mistakes and take risks. Those are the ones who get in trouble and end up in the hospital or something even worse. All right, uh, just a couple of shots for you. I wanna show you this uh, first shot. You can see in Mallory Square in Key West. This is, uh, there, there have been several category five hurricanes that have made landfall in the US. And uh, one of the most famous ones is the Labor Day hurricane in 1935, went through the Florida Keys. Flagler was building his railroad down to Key West and they, uh, there were about four or 500 workers building the railroad. The, the hurricane was so strong, it blew the train. This train was headed down there to save those the railway workers and it blew off the tracks um, as it made it to the Keys and they all perished. And if you drive down to the Keys in Key Largo in the median between the highway, you'll see a monument to the 1935 hurricane and the several hundred people who lost their lives in that storm. It's as you get onto Key Largo, if you're driving down toward Key West, it's on the left-hand side. It's pretty big, you can't miss it. It's a big monument and, uh, and, uh, and also the photo is in Mallory Square. You can check that one out too. Uh, just a couple other shots of hurricane damage, uh, you know, with uh, Andrew and just the power, um, which brings up hurricane shutters and preparing your house. You know, when they, when they test hurricane shutters and, and glass, hurricane glass, they do it with uh, two by four. They don't blow wind at it. They shoot two by fours at it. So and, and I'm not joking. There are test sites, there's one in Riviera Beach. They put a two by four in a big cannon. They put a hurricane uh, shutter up. They shoot that two by four out. And if it doesn't 
go through or penetrate it, it uh, they can pass. And the same with glass. Now, glass obviously will shatter, but hurricane glass, uh, that two by four should not go through that glass. So it's also rated on the sustained winds. But uh, th the reason I bring that up is that it's, it's this flying debris that causes a lot of issues in hurricanes and hurricane damage. It's not so much the sustained winds, but it's that coconut on the ground that gets lifted up at 150 miles an hour that's headed to your car or your house, a window. That's what does the damage. A coconut going 150 miles an hour can do a lot of damage or a two by four or a piece of plywood. Or in the case of this building, we took a big hit. I'm at the studios. Uh, Hurricane Francis in 2004, the roof started to become compromised. We had big pieces of sheet metal on the roof flying. They're flying all through this area. Uh, they're like razor blades. They're like six foot long razor blades. It's the debris that can get you in trouble very quickly. And that's why we want everyone inside as a hurricane comes through. So there's several issues with a hurricane. Obviously the wind damage is one. You also have uh, the storm surge, which I'll talk more about in a second. You have the threat for tornadoes and you have the inland flooding. Now the inland flooding is the rainfall that comes down. And um, as I speak here in early June, we have uh, spots in Martin County in particular that have 20 inches of rain in the last two to three weeks, a widespread flooding. And we can see that easily and we have in the past from hurricanes that have gone through this area. Now a watch is issued, hurricane watches and warnings, a watch is issued 48 hours in advance. And that gives you enough lead time to get all your preparation. Everyone asks me, when should I put up my hurricane shutters? The best answer to that, and it's always not set in stone, but the best answer is when a hurricane watch is issued. Because you now have uh, 48 hours before the hurricane force winds are expected. You have two days, you should be able to get up. Now when a warning's issued, that's 36 hours in advance, you should have all your preparations done at that point. You should have all your supplies, you should have your shutters up. You, it, you, it's just really last minute uh, preparations at that point. So watch 48 hours, warning 36 hours out. And it's the same for tropical storm watches and warnings too. Well, let me talk about the forecast for this year. So the, the forecast is for, now this is a seasonal forecast. This is not done by the Hurricane Center, by the way. Seasonal forecasts are done by, well, NOAA does one. Colorado State University, Dr. Bill Gray, who passed away just a few years ago. He's kind of the, the godfather of seasonal hurricane forecasting. He came down to Miami in the 1950s in the winter, you know, to, he was a snowbird. Everyone was like, well, I wonder what this upcoming hurricane season is going to be like. That's how he got into forecasting the seasonal hurricane forecast, because everyone was asking him, and he thought it would be an interesting thing to get into, and he was right. So he was really the, the, the I call him the godfather, and the, the wonderful man uh, and passed away. He's uh, Phil Klotzbach was his student and has taken over and has really expanded on the hurricane forecast that he does. And then you have Penn State, you have Colorado State, NOAA, you have about 10 agencies that do hurricane forecasts. So they're forecasting an above, most are forecasting above average season for this year. So we typically get about uh, 10 to 12 named storms on average, around six hurricanes, and they're forecasting a few more above that this year. And it has to do with warmer water. And not, not just, you know, people write me and they'll go, well, the water's really warm when I go to the Juno Beach Pier or the Lake Worth Pier. I mean, the water must be 90 degrees. It's not really relevant. Hurricanes aren't forming at the Lake Worth Pier. They are forming in the Atlantic and those areas in the Atlantic, the Caribbean and the Gulf where the hurricanes form, those are the critical uh, water temperature areas. So, and upper level winds, El Nino too is a big, factor two. One key note, to have a plan. Know now if you're in an evacuation area or if you're not. And if you are, then you should have a plan now to know where you're going to go. My, my wife, uh, we live in a, an evacuation area. My wife goes to a friend's house. There's an old saying, run from water, hide from wind. So if you live near the ocean, run away from the ocean, get inland. And if you're inland, get in a well-protected house. And those, those evacuation areas typically don't go too far inland too. Like here at the TV station, we're probably a mile from the beach. And this is not an evacuation area. This is an area that could flood, but as far as storm surge, all evacuation areas are, are determined by how far inland the storm surge will go. Saltwater, 
uh, inundation as it uh, moves inland. And this area is not expected, even in a Category 5, to get it. Most areas are kind of US-1, but there are some exceptions, uh, especially where there are rivers like the St. Lucie Inlet and uh, Jupiter Inlet and down in Boca. We also have all the information I've talked about, and we have the list of supplies and emergency numbers and contacts in our online hurricane guide at WPTV.com, and you can check that out. Uh, with, it's just packed with information and uh, is invaluable during the hurricane season. And we actually recommend, if you can, a go now, print it off, and then you have it so if the power goes out, you'll still have a copy of it that you can use for reference. So hopefully I've passed along a little bit of information to you. I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at weagle at wptv.com. Stay safe and uh, let's hope for a quiet season. <laughs>